All right, guys, uh, we are back for another installment of building your own neural network. Um, what we're going to need to add today is uh, a save method. Public void save string file path. Um, and as I alluded to in the previous video, I'm going to make this real simple, real human readable uh, and easy to generate from any source. Um, so I'm going to save this thing to XML. Okay. And again, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do minimal error checking uh, because that is not interesting to watch. So make sure they passed in something meaningful. Um, so if the file path they pass in is null, then let's just return and get out of here. Okay, so we're going to need an XML writer. Oops, that's not defined. Let's go up here and go using system.xml. All right, now let's try this again. XML writer, uh, we'll call it writer equals XML writer dot create, and we will create it in the location specified by file path. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and begin the document. Writer dot write start element, um, and we'll call it neural network. This is all going to be case sensitive. Um, usually what I do as soon as I write a start element, I close it. So let's go ahead, go down and write end element. Uh, sorry, open close, okay? This is neural network. All right, um, so that's going to write the root element in, right? So now I'm writing the neural network element itself. So in there, I'm going to go ahead and write the type. So let's add that as an attribute. So write attribute string. Uh, the attribute will be called type. And the value will be back propagation. Okay. Um, this goes into the assumption that someday, if you add a new type, uh, you'll be able to know what kind you're loading as soon as you uh, look at this attribute. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a parameters element. Okay, and this will have all the parameters that define the size of each layer, the number of layers, um, and all that good stuff. First of all, um, it might be useful to sort of have a name for this, like XOR network or test network number one. So let's go down here um, and let's real quick add a region called public data. And we're just going to add for now a public string name. Okay. And let's go ahead and set it equal to default by default. Um, and that way, it will at least be not empty and it's just going to be public and that way people can just uh, set it from the instantiated form uh, and refer to it and do whatever they want. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that as its own element, uh, as the first element within our parameters element. Uh, so let's go writer dot write start element parameters. Okay, and just to make sure I don't forget, let's write end element. Okay, this is parameters. Okay, um, so now we can start writing parameters. So let's write an element. So write element string. So write element string is cool. What it's going to do is the first parameter is going to be the name of the element, which will be called name. And the second parameter is going to be the value stored in there. So it'll be name. Oh, sorry, that's not in quotes. And this, what this is going to do is say an element created called name, um, and it's going to put the value stored in our public string here, name, into it. Okay? Um, and it'll close it off and that'll be it. 
So that's real easy. Let's go writer dot write element string. What's the first thing we're going to need? Well, let's go ahead and write our input size down. And we're going to add input size dot to string. Okay. Um, so in our parameters, we're going to have the name of the network, the input size. We're going to have, what else do we need? A layer count dot write element string layer count. And I'm using the same case, uh, kind of a weird camel case for everything is I use in the actual uh, property name. So this is going to be layer count dot to string. Okay. Um, so that's that. What are we going to need? Um, so the layer count is going to tell us how many individual layers we expect. What we need to do is write down for each layer its transfer function and its type or its size. I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and write down layer sizes. Okay. So write start element. Uh, we'll call this layers. And let's shut that. Dot write end element. This one is layers, just so I know where I'm at. Um, okay, so let's add a little loop here for int l equals zero, l is less than layer count l plus plus. For each layer, I'm going to add an element called layer, and it's going to have a couple attributes. One is the index, uh, one is the size, and one is the type. Okay, so let's writer dot write start element. Um, this is going to be called layer. And let's close that. Layer. Whoa, that was weird. Um, okay, so now we're in our layer element. Let's go ahead and give it some attributes. So write attribute string um, index. And this is going to be L, right? So that's going to be the index L is going to be the index of our layer component of our array. Uh, writer dot write attribute string. What else do I need? I need the size. Okay, and that's going to be a uh, layer size of L to string, right? It's XML, so everything going in has to be text. And finally, let's go writer dot write attribute string type. This is going to be the transfer function. So let's refer to our transfer function array for layer L. And all we're going to do is write to string. Okay, and the framework will take care of that for you. Um, so we're going to have an element called layers, and inside that we're going to have a bunch of, well, layer count many layer elements that have an index, a size, and a type all attached to them. Okay, so that's going to write down all of our layer sizes. Um, and that's it. This stuff will define the size of our network, um, and that'll be good to go. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do uh, after I've written all of this stuff down, is do the following writer dot flush. Okay. So that pushes everything down to the stream, which is a file stream. And we'll say writer dot save. No, sorry. Writer dot close. I'm used to XML DOM. Okay. So now let's, uh, let's test this. Okay. So uh, let's go back to our program. And let's go, so this should all still be in place. Let's go bpn dot um, save. And let's just set it to something easy like ctemp test network dot xml. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is move this before the read line here. So everything should be done by the time it requests that I press enter. All right, so let's run this. All right, so it looks like whatever our network did, it, it figured it out. And now if I go to my temp folder, 
I have an XML here. And there it is. Okay. So there's our neural network tab, uh, sorry, tag uh, element with the attribute type backpropagation. That's uh, we wrote in there. Um, here's our parameters element. That's what we defined in this video uh, with the name default because we didn't name it anything. Uh, the input size one, uh, which we should be able to see here. Let me do this. All right, there it is. Right, one, two, one. Uh, so input size is one, layer count is two. Now we begin this layers tag. In here, there's one, two individual layer elements. Um, index zeros, that's going to be the hidden layer, right? Should have size two. So it has size two, as we expect. It has a transfer function, rational sigmoid. And if you look here, the type is rational sigmoid, right? So all it does is print out exactly what you want it to be. So that's really cool. Um, and then, right, the next layer has size one and it is linear, okay? So that is that. So that defines the sizes and uh, types of layers for our network. All we need to do now is write down the weights. So we will do that in the next video and I will show you what that looks like.